Good morning and welcome to the Automation Morning Show. My name is Sean Tierney and this is the daily show in which I try to cover all of the new and interesting news in industrial automation. And with that said, let's get to our very first story. This is a story, a blog from Aviva, the people behind InTouch. Everybody knows Wonderware, right? And um, it's about uh, connecting with the future. And, you know, a lot of times these 10,000 foot view articles don't appeal to me. But I thought this was really good. Uh, this is by Peter Herwick, and um, it came out on the 5th, and it talks about the connected enterprise, connected in industrial automation economy. And I, I don't know if I agree with all the assumptions in this article, but it is very interesting, so I wanted to share it with you. We also have an article, uh, actually a press release from Siemens, talking about how they're collaborating with 80 acres to scale vertical farming. Now, if you're not familiar with Vertical farming, it's just what it sounds like. It's like you have a big building, you put a, a, a vertical farm in, basically, um, you know, going up, up many floors. And uh, it's it's a lot of times very automated where they're, uh, you know, watering the plants and checking nutrients and providing enough light. And it allows a lot of uh, crops to be grown in a very small area. So if you want fresh food, you know, you need to be have it pretty close. You don't want to be busting that in or shipping that in from halfway across the world. So uh, it's definitely something that's very interesting. And they're working with 80 acres to um, automate and expand. And, uh, you know, they're working on the power side, the financing side, the automation side. So I thought this was interesting and I wanted to share that with you. Uh, the next story is now this actually came out last month, but it was in this month's newsletter from the uh, good folks over at uh, Automation Direct. And uh, it's the basics of PID control, kind of a little explainer. So if you have somebody who you work with, I know most of the viewers of the show probably have a very firm understanding of PID control. But um, if you have somebody, maybe a junior person or somebody who's just getting into automation who needs to understand it, this is a great, uh, and I know there's a lot of other them out there, but this is new. So I wanted to share it with you and it's a great uh, kind of overview of what PID control is. And the next story this morning, this is actually an event that's coming up now. We've had Copia on the show many times. They have software that will uh, allow you, it's like Git-based source control for your automation projects. And um, they've been on our podcast a few times and uh, they have an introduction to Copia coming up. It's an event, online event. And so I wanted to share that with you. It looks really good. And they just created, uh, came out with a new product that goes with their source control. It's called Device Link. And that product allows them to automatically back up and um, archive your automation projects from your, let's say your PLCs. Um, they call it Device Link because it can do other devices too, but it's starting off, it does mostly PLCs and it does all the major vendors. We actually had them on the show talking about this um, a couple months back. So if you're interested, if you don't have a source control solution yet, I think one of the interesting things about Copia is that, you know, with other solutions from other companies, and there are great solutions from other companies out there for source control and automatic backup and archiving of your uh, and reporting on your, your PLC code. Um, Copia is by like the asset where you don't have to actually buy your own server. Now, yes, you could host Copia in your own personal cloud at your factory, but, um, you know, with other systems, you got to buy a server, you got to buy a very expensive license, you got to hire somebody to come in and set it up. I used to do setups for customers, and uh, while most of these software packages are not hard to set up, it requires a knowledge, it's deep knowledge of Windows, of SQL Server, of, and, and you know, which most PLC programmers, electrical engineers, uh, electricians don't have. So with Copia, everything's in the cloud, whether it's your personal cloud or their cloud, and so you don't have to buy an expensive server or you don't have to start off with a very expensive, uh, you know, uh, capital project funding level uh, 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 license of software. So something interesting, I did want to throw that out there again. Uh, there are other great solutions out there. This is one of them and uh, definitely worth taking a look at if you're interested in source control. Uh, with that, there's another one here from the good people over at MDT, right? Very similar product. And they have their own live webinar uh, webcast um, and they're looking at the trends in, of 2023 with Statista. Statista? And uh, that's coming up on January 26th. So another very interesting event for you to consider. And uh, there is some overlap between those two companies, uh, for sure. 
And uh, But I did want to share it with you because um, it was just recently announced and that's what we try to do here on The Morning Show is share what's new and exciting and interesting in automation, uh, industrial automation. With that said, I wanted to share about ATX West. Um, as I go through and look at all the vendors that I do, and I, please, if you, there's a vendor I'm not following, please share their name with me. I'd love to follow any and all industrial automation vendors that you find interesting and you follow. Um, but with that said, a lot of the industrial automation vendors will be in Anaheim, California on February 7th through 9th for ATX West. Now, I won't be attending. Um, I, I typically don't visit the West Coast. I've been out there a few times, but uh, I like to stay on the East Coast because that's where I'm from. It means shorter trips. I am actually looking at some uh, some trade shows up in Detroit, which I think is about a nine-hour drive for me. But uh, and hopefully to attend them in the spring. But uh, with that said... If you are on the West Coast or on the western half of the U.S. or you're going to be in the area during that week, you may want to check this out because I'm seeing most of the vendors I follow will be there, including people like Fanook and others. So um, there's just a lot of people that are going to be there. So this link goes directly to this list of vendors so you can see who's presenting, who's, who's hosting, having a booth over there at ATX West. And so I wanted to share that with you and bring that to your attention if you're not usually somebody who goes to that show. With that, I now want to go into a, a new segment we're doing, an in-depth seg segment or in-focus segment, where we talk a little bit more about in-depth about a product or about a news story. And today, it's going to be Studio 5000 V35. Now, we did have the people from Rockwell on the Automation Podcast last year. Thank you very much, Rockwell, for coming on. And that was great. And uh, they really covered a lot of information about, you know, Logics, what's new in Studio uh, 5000 version 35. But this morning, I just uh, want to highlight this article over at theautomationblog.com where I kind of break down what's new. And this is based on the uh, release notes. And so um, if you watch the podcast, you're probably aware that um, one of the big new features is the access test mode. So you can actually uh, simulate in real time your motion control behavior by simulating either an axis, a a module or a group level. So those two different, three different levels you can simulate and you don't have to have any hardware. Okay. Now I want to make this, uh, make this very clear. This is only, and this is a trend we're seeing with Rockwell. This only applies to the 5380s, 5480s and 5580s, right? So the newer controllers, right? So if you like me and the latest one you have is an L7, you will not be able to use this. Um, another thing that they uh, released was the Flex HA, 5000 okay uh, they extended the redundancy support for this line we don't have uh, flex uh, any of the flex 5000 or ha 5000 but um this could be important if you have a hazardous environment and you want to put io in and maybe you used to use the old flex ex um, this could be a really uh good addition to your systems especially if you're engineering these systems because of this extended redundancy support now as far as enhanced features I don't know if these are going to apply to most people, but uh, they did uh, expand the content of the equipment sequence unit ID information, as well as uh, equipment service controller support. So it does now support, these instructions do support both simplex and redundancy on the P controllers. Those are the new process controllers, right? Um, they also added more error codes to the equipment phase external request instruction. And they added some new and general instructions, right? So we have the Octan 2, so Octangent number 2. We have a process discrete 2, 3, and 4 state devices, so PD4, SD, okay? You have process N position device, PN position, and a process mix proof valve, okay? Now, they also added controller change detection, and they expanded that in the new uh, 5580 controllers. And they also updated device profiles, and we saw this on the uh, podcast where they actually uh, now the profiles instead of being the you know the multi-tabbed Windows dialog box it is now kind of a rich uh, HTML you know information box. So um, that are those are the major enhancements. They also did add some device support. They added the airline uh, 8652 from Burkett, and they also added the. SPC compact high precision weight sensor from Mettler Toledo. So those are now in the software and they corrected some anomalies. There was um, some issues here. I'm not going to list through all of these, but you can see these were the major issues that they corrected. Um, 
I don't know that most people run into these except maybe for the um, the delete option not working and safety and standard connections to a PowerFlex 755T. Um, you know, some of these other things like the uh, issue with the EN4TR, I don't know how many people have used those yet. I'd love to hear from you if you are. We have a EN3TR here in the office. Um, but in any case, that's it. And I also do want to point out here the link to our podcast where we sat down with Kristen from Rockwell. She uh, went through all the details. And we had a podcast a couple of weeks before this with the Logics Group. So that was good as well. You may want to catch that. And um, you also, if you want to get the full release notes, I've kind of put the information here in a link to the product versions webpage. And uh, this is the picture you're looking for. You just click on that little PDF document and that'll give you the uh, release notes. So you can grab a copy of that. And so that is this week's In-Depth. I just wanted to take a look at that. This is a brand new article I just released over at theautomationblog.com and I uh, wanted to release that. Not a lot of V35 for me, but I'm sure some of you, some of those points are probably a big deal for you. And uh, so I wanted to make you aware of it. Now, with that said, I want to switch over here to our course spotlight over at theautomationschool.com where I teach full time. And today we're taking a look at the Compact Logics Level 1 and 2, a course I called Compact Basics. And uh, I want to start off by looking at the pricing to kind of explain the differences in price. Got a couple of questions on this last week. So we basically, most of my courses have two levels. A level one, which was the initial course, covers all the basics. And then level one and two, which is additional lessons on top of the basics, right? And um, the prices here on the level one and two will be changing. It will be going up because I will be adding several new lessons to it uh, next month. And... Um, this level one and two does come with the ultimate cost, the 2023 cost. I will start filming in uh, the uh, late spring, early summer when I get back from the uh, trade shows. So with that, I wanted to kind of scroll up here and kind of talk about what's covered in the courses here. And if you're coming to this course page at theautomationschool.com, you'll have to click this more to see this. But um, in the standard edition covers... Understanding the different models of the Compact Logics, I do a hardware tour of nearly every single Compact Logics ever released. Uh, you know, everything from the original L20 and 30 through the L3Xs, the L4Xs, the L, uh, you know, 5370s and 5380s. And um, we go through RS Logics 5000 and Studio 5000. What's the difference? What, how do they look different and whatnot? We also actually size up a system. This is very important because if you have to deploy a new system, you know, and you know your I.O. count, maybe you have 100 in and 50 out, you need to be able to choose all the parts and components. And it can be difficult if you're just using the literature because you may forget some things, like are you getting the right terminal blocks? Are you getting an end cap? You know, there's all these different things you need to be cognizant of. And so I show you how to use Rockwell's uh, software, IAB, to actually choose a system and, and also check your network to make sure you're not overloading it. You know, can I put a thousand VFDs on the Ethernet IP, go into a, a tiny little L1? Well, the answer is no, but I show you how to, you can find that. And then we go through setting up the communications, right? And, uh, you know, we add the IO to our system and then we set up communications, Ethernet serial and USB because it's compact logics and control logics. We also do uh, control net. Um, and then uh, we actually go through and test the I.O. We actually go through like you were building a new system and you want to run through all the I.O. to make sure the right outputs and inputs come on and off when they're supposed to. So forcing, turning things on, turning things off, right? A very, very important part of uh, commissioning a system. And then we go through controller tags, we go through program tags, we go through, you know, creating and uh, tag aliases, we go through um, setting up uh, and how test programs and routines work. We go into a deep dive on that to really make sure you understand that and then we write a bunch of different ladder logic programs and uh, you know based on real world app applications you know motor control routines conveyors sensing you know photo eyes all kinds of different uh, routines that we do in ladder logic and uh, not only uh, creating them downloading and running them but also testing and troubleshooting them as well and then in the extended edition we go into function blocks and there's a lot of uh, we go into trends and then there's a lot of other things we'll be doing in that uh, extended edition as well, which I'll be finishing up, uh, you know, this spring before, uh, actually probably this winter, before uh, heading off to the trade shows um, that are in the uh, March, April time frame or May to April, May time frame. So with that, I just wanted to cover that. If you have any questions of that, of course, you can ask them right over here. 
You can contact us. There's different ways to get in touch with us at the Automation School. You can call us. Usually the phone is off because I'm in here recording either a lesson or an episode of the show. Um, but you can leave a voicemail. You can email me at support at the automation school dot com and uh, I'll answer all your questions. And if you need to enroll a group, we do have special discounts for that. And if you enroll three or more, we have a group tracking web page. So if you're offering your people a stipend to learn about PLCs or PACs or HMI or SCADA, then you can track and see if they pass all the quizzes and complete the course. So we provide that free of charge to our group enrollment customers. And with that, that rounds up our training course look of the day. And now I want to go over to talk about our community where you can follow us completely free here. If you want to message me or post or interact with the members, it does cost a one cup of coffee a month. I think it's $2 a month to, uh, to be a supporter. And uh, I just like to post, you know, put this out there. We've covered several questions that have come in over at automation.locals.com on the show already, but I did want to uh, mention that. And with that, that brings us to the birthdays. Now we got a lot of birthdays today because of the weekend, right? So um, let's go ahead and go through them. We got Abu Baka, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce anybody's names. Sam, Joseph, Swapnil, Mohammed, Richard, Nick, Kennedy, Bishwajit, Laszlo, Praveen, Lewis, Bill, Venkat, John, Sarv, Scott, Jeffrey, Farman, uh, Brantley, Sue Smith, Sue Smith, uh, Wesley, Masood, Mark, Manga, John, Vic, a hey Vic from uh, Vic's been on the podcast, um, Zubir, Muro, Mardine, or Manny, Bruce, and that's it. Bruce is the last one. So. I want to wish you all a very, very happy birthday. Some of you have your birthday today, somewhere over the weekend. So if your birthday's already passed, I just want to wish you a very, I hope you had a great birthday and a great weekend. And for all those whose birthdays are today, happy birthday. You'll be getting a, all of you will be getting a message from me later today on LinkedIn, wishing you a happy birthday. And if you would like to um, uh, get on my connections, be one of my connections. I only accept uh, industrial automation connections. Um, that's kind of rare among people on LinkedIn, but my goal is for this account is to really just be connected to people who find industrial automation interesting and uh, maybe use it on a daily basis. So uh, if you are in industrial automation, feel free to connect with me. I will put my link at the bottom of the screen there, Mr. Sean Tierney, and uh, feel free to connect. I, can, I will accept connections from anybody in the industrial automation area who's English speaking because... Um, you know, if, if you don't uh, speak English, then we can't communicate, right? <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, with that, I did want to remind you that you will find all of the links in today's show over at automate.news. And um, you can see them right here. And uh, I know this, this we're a weekend. The site is still pretty um, basic, but that's okay. You can see here a link to the show. That'll take you over to the automation blog and filter out just for the shows. Um, you can see our blog, our training site. This is also where you can submit a news tip or contact me. Um, definitely want to ask uh, anybody out there, if you hear something new, whether it's a new piece of literature, a new event, even if it's your event, feel free to send it over to me in a news tip and I'll try to feature it in the daily show. And with that, I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in this morning. I want to wish you all an awesome day. And until next time, my friends, peace.